give you guys an overview. All right, well, let's start off with the first question. What is REST? Now, REST basically just stands for Representational State Transfer. All right. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's an architectural style for network communication between two applications. Now, in our case, it will be a Laravel app that we will develop at the back end, the server, and the client will be Next.js, Nux.js, or Dino.js, or whatever client that you want, which relies on a stateless protocol, usually HTTP, for interactions. All right, so that's basically it. Now, the representation can either be in XML or JSON format or GraphQL, all right? But in our case, we will use JSON. But just remember, REST doesn't equal JSON or REST doesn't equal HTTP. So that's why in this case, usually with HTTP. In our case, it will be HTTP and JSON API. But REST doesn't necessarily mean json or http okay now let's move on what makes an api a restful api right now there is five constraints which means it is necessary to make it uh, a restful api and the sixth one is just optional and that can be code on demand now let's start off with the first one it needs to be stateless all right so basically the state is contained in the request itself all right the server don't store anything about the client all right and they need to have a client in a server in our case the client is next year is and our server is obviously on laravel okay now the next one is the uniform interface all right it basically can identify in the url basically what resource it is it can be also the resource manipulation with the representation all right and it can be self-descriptive under the uniform interface and the other one can provide links for different content now a layered system a layered system, basically a client can make a request and the response can come from either a web server or a load balancer or a cache server or even a CDN. The client doesn't need to know where it's getting the data from. It's basically, let's say you have a load balancer because there's too many people on the website or too many requests and then it still gets his uh, information. All right, so this if you kind of fill all these five right here, you basically got a RESTful API. And if you fulfill the sixth one, this is just optional. It will quite handy for you. But now the thing is, RESTful doesn't necessarily mean it's good. All right. In some cases, you just want to do the, you don't need to go all the way to fulfill all of this right here. Now, obviously, I didn't mention the cacheable and your server can be, are optional either cacheable or not right there okay let's move on now in the restful api api we use http verbs now for get we're going to retrieve a resource and a post we create a resource and for put we have update the resource and delete we delete a resource but necessarily in this case we're going to make use of a CRUD application all right, but a RESTful API doesn't mean it is equal to CRUD. So there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship between the GET and the basically our CRUD verbs right there. All right. Now let's move on to the status codes for HTTP. Now the thing is, I'm only displaying ones that we're going to use right here. Okay. Now the first status code, so if we have a 200, it means everything is okay. A 201 basically means a resource is created, right? And a 4 is a bad request. And a 404, I think most of you have seen this. This is basically mean not found. Okay, so we didn't find the resource. And a 401 just means, listen, I don't know who you are. Basically unauthorized. And a 403 means I see that you're locked in, but uh, you're not allowed to view a certain resource okay so what is a resource now let's say we got an endpoint right here for http myapi.io forward slash api version one 
forward slash books. So basically this books part right here is the resource that we expose at the endpoint. Now this can be articles, tickets, users, or whatever the case might be. And a resource, it needs to be plural, but if you make it singular, it's okay, but stay consistent, all right? And other thing is this is a collection of a resource and this is an instance of a resource. So books forward slash book number two. All right. Now versioning. Now versioning can either be in the header of a request or it can be in a U in the URL. Now let's go back. Let me show you in here. So in here we got a, the version number in the URL itself. All right. So let me quickly show you for in the header. All right, so basically I've got an article collection right here that I've created. Now what we can do in with the response that we can send, don't worry if you don't understand this yet, I will explain to uh, when we actually create the API. So we can response header, we can actually send it. And then here we can actually set a version like this and we can just say version one or just like this. We can just do V1 like that we can send it in the header itself so that we can actually get the version number like that in the header or we can send it in the url but in our case for simplicity's sake i like to use it in the url so that's what we're going to use but i just wanted to show you actually in laravel in the collection right here right so if i go to the browser you will see we got a version right there of v1 basically for in the header part of our so here i'm getting all the articles in our header i'm just showing the version right here okay awesome stuff right so there's the two ways that you can do uh, the versioning for the api and it's quite important to do versions because let's say later on you want to update or make fixes to your api it's quite handy if you upgrade to a newer version or 1.2 or 1.4 and then you can actually, instead of having all the, your, basically your developers, the clients basically using your old API, nothing will break for them because you made some changes. Okay, so that they know they need to upgrade to the latest version or stuff like that. All right, let's move on. Now, this is just some tips. All right, if you stay consistent with the back best practices of what already determined is a good API, all right, don't be too creative when you develop your API because remember, other people need to use that API. Okay, keep it simple. Now, as far as possible, write good documentation because remember, you're not writing because sometimes you create an API for internal use, but sometimes you want to for other people to actually consume your API, but that means they might not even know what is happening. All right, so if you're using the best practices and have some good documentation, people can actually love to use your API. And that's why I put it here. Remember, developers are people too. All right, so they also get frustrated during the days, and especially if you, they struggle to find how to actually work with your API and the documentation will help them out quite a bit all right so that's an end of this episode guys so what we will do in the next episode we will create our laravel app and actually start developing our api so see you guys there adios